To examine the lumbar spine or the back, first thing to do is to inspect. So put the patient side on and we're just looking at the posture of the back so we can just see the normal lordosis. I can turn you a little bit more. The normal lordosis of the back and the kyphosis of the spine, that's all completely normal. And just turn the patient so that we can see the back looking for the alignment of the back nice and straight. Want to see if there's a scoliosis, so we perform Adam's test, which is ask the patient to bend forward, touch their toes, and then come up slowly. And what we're looking for is any abnormality in the spine. We can do that once more, and then come up slowly. And we're looking for the scapula being level. Any scoliosis will cause an unevenness, a rib hump. While the patient's in this position, looking at the patient's face, we palpate the spine, working our fingers down, the spinous processes all the way down to the bottom. And then just at the bottom, either side of the spinous processes with the fingers feeling the facet joints and seeing if they're tender. Most usually tender at the back, the L5 level, but can be higher up. And just to the side, underneath the iliac crest, will be the sacroiliac joints. And just palpate here to see if there's any tenderness, because the sacroiliac joints can be tender. And then the next thing we do is place the patient on the couch to carry on the back examination. So we've put the patient on the couch to examine their back and the first thing we do is test the neurology and that's the nerves of the lower limb. Testing sensation first and the easiest way to do this is to compare both sides at the same time. Testing just the thigh, this is L1, L2 nerve root, that feels the same. Over the kneecaps, that's L3. On the inside of the legs, that's L4, and on the medium alveolus. On the outside of the foot, that's specifically L5, and the soles of the feet, and that's S1. We're going to test the motor power of the lower limbs, and we flex the hip up first. If you can lift that leg up and push down to make sure it's nice and strong, that motor power at the hip is fine. And on the other side, and then move the heel into the bum to so ask the patient to flex the knee and then extend the knee and pushing away. So making sure there's good power and flexion extension of the knee. And again, push the heel into the bum, that's flexing the knee and extending the knee. And do the same again, flexion extension or dorsiflexion of the foot. So move the feet back towards you. So pushing down, that's good power. And then push against me. And then just test the hallux, the big toe. Push the big toe towards you and the big toe down. Next, we're going to test the reflexes at the knee, which is the L3 knee, L3 reflex. And we just do this by getting a tendon hammer, just bending the knee slightly, taking the weight of the knee so the patient's nicely relaxed and just pressing. You can see nice good reflex here and doing the same on the other side. And then testing the ankle reflex, just stretching the Achilles tendon. You can see the foot move nicely. You see the foot move nicely. The ankle reflex S1 works perfectly well. The last thing to do will be to do the sciatic stretch test. So lifting the leg up, straight leg raising, till it can't go anymore, the patient feels uncomfortable. And then just pushing the foot back to see if that causes extra irritation. Sign that the sciatic nerve or the nerves have been caught in the back. And then up to the other side, that moves a lot freer and it moves freer. So the problem's on the left side. That's the end of the back examination.